Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the plugin pins or the plugin pin connector in Reaper. Now, basically, a plugin pins are a way of moving signal around our plugins or our effects or routing signal anywhere in Reaper. For example, I have a pad here. Let's see what it sounds like. Now let's add an EQ to it. Go to our effects. I'm going to go over here to re EQ. And let's create a low pass filter. We'll remove these other bands and just create a low pass filter with some bandwidth. And it sounds like this. Now, the reason we're hearing this filter is based on our plugin pins. If we go right up here and click it, this is our plugin pin connector. The sound is coming in on one and two, or left and right, and going out on one and two. So if we turn these two off, we're not going to hear this filter. And we turn it back on, we will. If we just turn it on on the left side, we're just going to hear that filter on the left side. And the same with the right. In fact, this is a pretty cool way of creating a stereo effect. So let's add some parameter modulation to this filter. Let's put these both back on. Let's select this frequency. Choose parameter modulation. We'll choose LFO. Let's adjust it. Now let's say we like that. Now we could put that just on the left side. Go to the plug and pin connector. Turn it off on the right side. And we're just going to hear it on the left. But now we can duplicate it by copying it and pasting it and putting this one on the right. Right here and turn it off on the left. Now it sounds the same, but we can now change the second one. We can change the direction to negative. Let's readjust the baseline. And now it'll sound like this. To get an idea of what it looks like, let's float these. Here's our left, and here's the right. So it creates a stereo effect by adjusting our pins. Let me show you another example. Let's delete the second one and put it back to both sides. Let's say we wanted to combine the bypass signal with the filtered one. We could do that with our pins. Open it back up. And let's turn it off over here. Let's make some more channels. If we click this once, it adds channel three and four. So let's move the effect to three and four. But right now we're not going to hear it because we're only hearing one and two. But we could send this to a separate track. Let's make a new track down here. Let's create a send from this one to this one. We're only going to send three and four to one and two, and we'll send it pre fader. So now if we just listen to this track, we don't hear the effect. But now we can blend in the effect right here along with the bypass signal. To get both signals at the same time. So that's another good use for our plug-in pins. We could send our effects to different tracks 
while they're still bypassed or different on the original track. Let me give you another example. And this time, let's add a splitter. We'll search in our filter for splitter, and we can split by three bands, four bands, or five bands. Let's keep it simple and use three bands. And what this plugin is going to do, it's going to split our signal based on the frequency. So with these two crossovers, the first band is going to be 20 hertz to 200 hertz, then 200 hertz to 2 kilohertz, then 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. But we could adjust it here at our crossovers. But for now, let's leave it. But in order to hear the split, we need to check out our plug-in pins or the plug-in pin connector. And we can see right here, it's coming into one and two, but it's only going out the low output. So we're not hearing the mids or the highs. But if we want to adjust it separately, we can set up separate tracks over here. Let's add three of them. And let's go back to the plug-in pin connector. And let's add more channels. So now we have six. One and two is for the lows. Three and four is for the mids. And five and six is for the highs. So now we can send from this track one and two to one and two, pre-fader for our lows. Let's take the master pair and send off of this. So we're not hearing it from this track. And let's send to the second track, just the mids, which is gonna be three and four, also pre-fader. And then finally, the highs. Drag it and drop it here, but just send five and six, pre-fader. Now we should have the complete sound playing back, but it's separated by frequency. So if we turn these two off, we're just hearing the highs, or the mids, or the lows. So we could re-blend our signal based on their frequency. Kind of like a graphic equalizer. So let's cut some mids. Or the highs. Or the lows. And we can re-blend any signal that we want. Could be a final mix, or a drum bus, or in this case, just a pad. Let me show you one other way you can use plug-in pins. Let's check out a drum loop. Let's hear what it sounds like. Let's say we wanted to add some effects to it, but we want to adjust them in parallel, which means you want to add the effects, but still blend them with the unaffected signal or a different affected signal. So let's go to our effects and let's add a compressor. Right here, the recomp. Let's try to really smash it. That sounds good like that, but we want to put this effect on a different track and then blend it back in with the bypass signal. Go to the plug-in pin connector and just take it out of here. Let's add two more channels and put it on three and four. We could turn these two off here, the aux. That's just used for side chaining. We don't need it for this. So now compressor is coming in on one and two and going out on three and four. So we're not going to hear it now. We'll get back to that in a bit. Now it's add an EQ. And with this EQ, I really want to feature our symbols or in this case, the hi-hat. So let's filter out the low end. And let's boost the top end. And now let's compress that. Add another compressor.
It really boosts the top end or the cymbals, but it also compresses it so it's nice and controlled. But I want to put that on its own separate track so I can blend that with the bypass signal. So again, we'll go to the plug and pin connector, but let's first do it on our EQ because this sound uses two plugins. So we'll start with the EQ. We'll add two more channels for five and six, and we'll send our EQ to five and six. Then we'll go to the compressor and take that signal from five and six, turn these two off, and send that to five and six, not to one and two. So again, now we're gonna hear on this track, just the bypass signal. But now we can create two more tracks, one for the compressor and one for the EQ and the compressor. So let's try that. So add two more tracks and we'll send the first one from three and four, which is that first compressor. Again, pre-fader. And the third one will be from five and six, which was that EQ and compression. Also pre-fader. So now this track is just the bypass sound. And this one, let's turn it off here, is just that first compressor. And this one, is that EQ and compressor. So let's try blending them all in. Turn this back on, bring this down and bring it up. Get a nice blend of both. Let's bring this in too. That's a more interesting sound. We have the original, we have the compressed, and we have the EQ'd and compressed, all blended to create one sound. And this is all possible because we adjusted it using our plug-in pins or the plug-in pin connector. Now there's so many things we could do with these plug-in pin connectors. The examples are endless, but I think you get the idea, and I hope this encourages you to explore this feature or use it even more. So that's the plug-in pins or the plug-in pin connector in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!